And be not conformed to this world. That means don't live like the world is. I used to live like that, but I don't live like that anymore. Why? Because I've been set free. Amen. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Now this word transform is a Greek word metamorpho. And it literally is where we get the word metamorphosis from. That's where a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and it comes out a butterfly. Change from one thing to something totally different. Yes. We were transformed. Be you transformed by the renewing of your minds that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I've heard people say, well, there's God's got a good will, and He's got an acceptable will, and He's got a perfect will. The truth is, all three of these wills, they're all the same will. God's will is good, God's will is acceptable, and God's will is perfect. Amen. Thank you. It's only one will. It's good, acceptable, and perfect. Amen. God doesn't have an acceptable will and a perfect will. We don't. I hear people say, well, that was God's acceptable will. No. God doesn't have an acceptable will and a perfect will. God has one will, and we can get out of God's will. But God can still use us even if we get out of his will. He can still bring us back. He can still start all over from where we messed up. If God tells you to do a thing and you do something else, that doesn't mean it's acceptable to him to do that other thing. It just means that you've missed it. And we miss stuff sometimes. But God will pick us up right from where we missed it and use us from that point. When we get in God's will. God's will is good, acceptable, and perfect. Now, the Lord showed me this a long time ago. And then when I, when I learned the, the end that's in between these words, it's a great word, kahi. It's spelled K-A-I. It's a word that links everything together into one. And so it says God, that we may prove or show forth what is that good and kahi, acceptable and kahi, perfect will of God. In other words, there's one will of God, but they are good and acceptable and perfect. Now, the Lord showed me that. But I didn't know the word really said that exactly until I really found that, that word that's translated and. Yep. It's a K-E word that links it all together. And there's several portions of scripture that use that. When, uh, when I was listening to John Bevere, I read John Bevere's book on, on uh, what was the name of that book? On the bait of Satan. And it was on take offense, taking offenses. And it's in like, uh, from like uh, Matthew chapter 24. Jesus is talking to the church. And he says in the last days, he said, people will be offended. And he's talking about Christians. He said, many will be offended. And starts giving a progression of what's going to happen from them taking offense. And how that they'll go. Through. And John Bevere said that all those are linked together. And, I, and when he said that, I realized the ends in between that, they must be the Cahe word. So I looked it up, and they were all, the K he word, in other words, they were all linking all those things together. That's an important word for us to understand, because most of, like some, some of the ands in the Bible, in the New Testament, they're and also, like our and is now. But that K he word is a word that links, like, subjects and ideas together. It's important. Hallelujah. Turn me to first, first, uh, let's see, turn me to, uh, Hallelujah. Turn me to Ephesians chapter 4. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 8. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Say, he gave us gifts. Yes. Yes. Let's skip down to verse 11. It says, and he gave some apostles. Now that's, now, and, then, and then it says, and. Now this and is a Greek word, d, d, dad. And it means, and, but and also. He gave some apostles and also some prophets, and also, that's his dad word, some evangelists, and also some pastors and teachers. Now this and is a key word. It means it links together pastors and teachers. So this we call this a five-fold ministry that I've heard over the years 
But that was really just a fourfold ministry, but the pastor teachers linked together, and they are linked together. So there's pastor teacher. Now there is the office of a teacher in the other places in the Bible, but this particular portion of scripture, it's saying the pastor teacher. And those were given, those offices were given to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now I used to believe that that was three different things. Those ministry gifts were to perfect the saints, to do the work of the ministry, and to edify the body of Christ. But one time when I was praying, you can hear from God if you pray. I, I hear from God when I pray. We need to be praying a lot. You want to hear from God a lot? Pray a lot. So I was praying in my basement and uh, down, down when I was down in Kimberling City. And uh, we had a house down there by the lake a long, long time ago. And I, I was walking in the basement praying. And the Lord spoke clear to me. And he said, he start, quoted this portion of scripture. And he said, that doesn't mean that those ministry gifts are for those different purposes like that, those specific purposes. He said that means that those ministry gifts are to perfect the saints so they can be doing the work of the ministry and build up the body of Christ. Yeah. I said, wow. So I looked, I had a weast, like word study on the New Testament words. And I got my weast and I looked at it, and that's exactly what it means. It means to perfect the saints so they can be doing the work of the ministry and build up the body of Christ that we all come into the unity of the faith. Glory to God. Even unto the fullness of the stature Glory of Jesus of Christ. Amen. So those ministry gifts are given for that purpose. But but this, this one word, kehi, is, is an important word to really understand the way things the things of God work. I'm going to look at a couple of other instances with that. Turn me to uh, turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 3. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Now, before I read this, I want to quote Luke chapter 16, 6, verse 16. Jesus said the law and the prophets are the old covenant, the Old Testament, was until John the Baptist. He said, since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. Another place says, the kingdom of heaven is preached. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are interchangeable. Amen. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, they're the same. It's the same thing. And so he said, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. The other place says the kingdom of heaven is preached and, and the violent take it by force. We have to seize the promises of God. We have to, to grab hold of this grace. We have to seize this grace. By faith, we enter into this grace wherein we stand. The grace of God is a free gift of God, but we have to receive that by faith. By faith are you saved through grace. By grace you say through faith. Amen. And not works, it's the gift of God. It's the gift of God, we have to receive that gift. We have to seize what God's done for us. We have to take it and walk in it by faith. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here John the Baptist came preaching the baptism of repentance. And in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying to the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. And the same John had raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat or food was locusts and wild honey. Then he went out from him to... Then went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan and were baptized in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, this is the confession of repentance. In 1 John, it talks about if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that confession is the same confession that they were doing here with John the Baptist, a confession of repentance. In other words, I'm turning away from those that old stuff, and I'm going to turn to God and live for God. Amen. The Bible says that, that Paul, Paul said that when he was talking to King Agrippa, he said when Jesus appeared to him, he told him to go to all people everywhere and tell them to turn away from their sins and turn to God 
and show them the changed life that they really had changed. That's, That's right. the same message John the Baptist preached. Yes. That's the same message Jesus preached. Yes. That's the same message Peter preached. Amen. It's the message of the gospel. Amen. Turn away from your sins and turn to God Amen. and show them the changed life yes. that you really have changed. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And so John the Baptist, he's preaching this message. But when they saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, to the, to the Pharisees and Sadducees, O generations of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? In other words, they, they, Jesus said you're not more righteous than the Pharisees or the scribes. He said you will not make it to heaven. You have to live holy, folks. They were evil, evil people. I mean, even though they, they tried to put burdens on the people, they did not live the life themselves. 